Hey there everyone, Garrett from Real Watchers here, and I thought I would do a fun video today, uh, because if you know anything about collecting physical media, you'll know what July is. It's one of the best months of the year. It's the Criterion 50% off sale over at Barnes & Noble here in the United States. And I thought I'd do a video recapping all of the movies that I have purchased over the last month. I know it's the beginning of August, but I wanted to make sure I had till July 31st to include everything that I could have purchased. There are almost 20 movies that I purchased over the last month, which is more than I've ever purchased from the Criterion Collection sale. And uh, I thought I would just go over quickly each one, why I bought them, and uh, why I'm so excited to have them in the collection. There are a mixture of films that I have seen, films that I haven't seen, or ones that are coming up on our show, Movie Club, uh, that I just wanted to make sure that I had on physical in case they weren't available to stream anywhere. Up first is an example of a movie that I have never seen before but wanted to pick up, and that is Blue Velvet. Uh, I, again, have never seen this film, but it is one that is so widely regarded, and I always hear so much about, and uh, was very excited to pick it up over this month and uh, add it to the collection as something that I will be watching hopefully pretty soon and give my thoughts on on Letterboxd. Second up is a Danish film called The Celebration. Uh, I was really excited to pick this up. I love this packaging, how it's clear and you don't really see anything. Um, this is one of those movies I've seen mentioned so much on other YouTube channels about movies. Um, really excited to check this out. I think it was mentioned quite a few times over on Cinefix um, and immediately it had my attention and I was looking forward to watching it. And so when it was part of the sale and it was 50% off, knew I had to pick it up. So like Blue Velvet, it is going to jump onto the watch list uh, and hopefully again, pretty soon here. Third one is yet another film that I haven't seen before and that is Cure. Um, this is actually gonna be coming up on Movie Club fairly soon at the time of recording this video. And I wanted to make sure that I had this one on a physical copy just in case it wasn't available to stream anywhere. I believe it is available to stream on Criterion Channel pretty regularly, but I did wanna make sure I had it physically. Um, and uh, therefore I went ahead and bought it because, you know, when it's 50% off, you just kind of add extra things into your cart sometimes. Next up is a French horror film and a very good one at that. I is without a face. Um, again, love the packaging here and I love the art they picked for this one. Um, but uh, for those of you who don't know, I is without a face is a French horror film that is notable in so many different ways. Um, and uh, was I just knew when I saw it, had to pick it up, had to go into the collection. And the pink really stands out when you put it on the shelf kind of next to everything else. And so uh, I love this movie and uh, hopefully you will too. A lot of you should check it out because it is fantastic. Staying on the topic of horror, we have the German Funny Games, uh, a movie that I've heard so much about and uh, knew that I wanted to pick it up again because uh, it's one of the movies I've been wanting to watch for quite a while and couldn't find anywhere. Um, and so I'm really excited that I was able to pick this up and put it in the collection. Um, again, it's another movie that's gonna enter the watch list and uh, you know, hopefully I can get a crack at it soon, but I'm um, super excited to have this one because I haven't been able to find this really anywhere yet. So it was my first time finding it physically. Next up, a movie I have seen and a movie that I very highly respect, and that's the original Godzilla. And I love this packaging for this version. It kind of comes in this kind of cardboard slip cover. Um, it's a great movie. And when you look at it as the kind of metaphor for nuclear war and nuclear experimentation that it was, um, I think that a lot of people will come to appreciate this film more, even if it does suffer from the same issue that some modern day monster movies suffer with, and that is having relatable and interesting human characters. Uh, next up, I am a sucker for Charlie Chaplin, and so when I saw that they had The Great Dictator, I needed to pick it up. This movie has one of the best uh, kind of ending sequences ever. Uh, Charlie Chaplin's speech at the end of this movie is so iconic, and it is still unfortunately so relevant um and this movie is also just really funny too um kind of a parody of hitler while hitler was still alive and currently invading other parts of europe it's a very daring film and one that i have come to respect very much over the last couple of years and so i knew i had to pick it up when i saw it next up is a film that i really respect even though it's not necessarily one of my favorite films it is a very unique one and that is Haxon. Um, Haxon is kind of a, it's a very weird film. It's from 1922 and is at both parts a documentary and a fictionalized kind of recreation of witchcraft throughout the years. There's some documentary pieces, there's some more recreations that are kind of fun to watch. 
And a lot of people will say that they find this film creepy or disturbing, and I can certainly see why, but I think this movie is just really refreshing and something that you would not expect out of film in the 1920s, because this film is now over 100 years old, and it's really hard to believe. It's absolutely fantastic looking for its time. And so when I saw that it was available at my local Barnes & Noble, I knew that I had to pick it up. And for any of you Ghost fans out there that watched uh, the Right Here, Right Now concert film that came out recently, you would have seen some clips of this that were put into the movie. Next up is a perennial Letterboxd favorite and a horror fan favorite, and that's House. I've been looking for House for a very long time. Um, finally, they had it in stock at my store, and so I scooped up as soon as I saw it. This is a very weird movie, um, and it's not for the faint of heart. This is definitely an art house film at its finest, pushing the boundaries of what you could do at the time, made in 1977, the same year as uh, Star Wars came out. Um, and uh, yeah, this film is very weird, and it's kind of one of those movies that's nice to have on the shelf, because I guarantee... When you have someone over for a movie night, they have probably never heard of this or seen it, unless they're a cinephile like you and me are. Um, but this is kind of a weird one to have in your back pocket and a really fun one because everyone that I have kind of recommended this to has ended up really enjoying it. So had to buy it when as soon as I saw it. Next up is one that I've been waiting for for a long time and probably the most popular film so far that I have kind of displayed, and that is The Princess Bride. This is specifically the 4K version that comes with the actual book kind of in the inside of it. Um, I have always loved this movie. Um, my parents are big fans of this movie, and so we watched it a lot when we were younger. Um, and it's one of those movies that, you know, my brother and I, when we were kids, we liked it because of the fighting and kind of the, some of the, you know, more action elements. But as I grew up, I tend to really appreciate the comedy of it, um, the romance side of it as well. This movie is really, really good and is far better than I think a lot of people remember it being. So as soon as I saw that they had this kind of bound, kind of felt book edition, like I, I knew I had to pick it up. It was Destiny. Um, and I, yeah, I love this movie. If you've never seen it before, you really should check it out. Uh, next up on the list is Rashomon, directed by Akira Kurosawa, one of the best filmmakers of all time. And this is a film that I have actually never seen, and I am super excited to put this into my watch list. I love Kurosawa's other work that I have seen, especially Seven Samurai, which is one of the finest films ever made. Um, and I have heard nothing but great things about this one. And I think I actually needed this to fill out my cart to fit a gift card or something. And so I picked it up because I've been wanting to watch it for a very long time. And now I have it. So, you know, super excited to actually finally check this piece out. Next up is a film recommended to me by one of our stream viewers, and uh, I am so glad that I checked this movie out in my own time, and that is Seconds. Now, this is a film that I'm sure probably some of you have, or most of you have never heard of before. This star is one of Hollywood's biggest stars of the 50s, Rock Hudson, in his best role ever. Uh, a film about a company that offers to stage your death and then help you go through cosmetic surgery to start a new life. It's such a unique concept for 1966 and it's made so incredibly well with definitely some more artsy elements to it than I've seen in other 60s films of its time. Um, director John Frankenheimer does an incredible job with this film and as I said, Rock Hudson gives his best performance ever. So if you haven't seen Seconds, I highly, highly recommend it. This entered my top 150 films of all time and it is currently one of my favorite films that I've watched in the last year. Next up is one of the films that is so influential to the medium of film, and I absolutely respect and love and admire this movie, and that is The Seventh Seal. Ingmar Bergman's film from 1957 with, of course, the actor Max von Sydow is just, it's legendary. Um, some of the cinematography in this film is fantastic. Or actually, most of it is. The entire film is gorgeous. Um, the performances are feel really real, even though it's kind of the supernatural aspect of what's going on with the actual embodiment of death being there. It is such a beautiful film. Uh, and if you've never seen it before, I would highly recommend you give it a shot. It may not be for everyone, because I know some people have this weird phobia of foreign in films, but you should really check this out if you haven't yet. I know if you're a cinephile, you probably have already, but uh, if you're on kind of the film journey to experience more, you should definitely check out The Seventh Seal. 
Next up is a classic of the thriller genre, The Silence of the Lambs. This movie is fantastic if you've never seen it before. Highly, highly recommend it. Um, and I definitely wanted to pick this up because it does have the kind of slip cover again. I think these boxed versions that Criterion does are fantastic. Um, and they're just, they're gorgeous. They kind of stick out on the shelf a little bit, which is fine, um, but they're gorgeous. And they're uh, this film is absolutely fantastic. Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster are incredible in this film. The cat and mouse game they play is fantastic. Um, I know most of you have probably seen or heard of this movie, but you should definitely check it out if you haven't already. And if you need to give it a rewatch, you should, because I think it's probably better than you remember. Next up is a film that I've heard so much about, and that is Solaris from Andrei Tarkovsky. Uh, this 1972 film is one that I have heard so many positive things about. I have not actually seen a single Tar uh, Tarkovsky film yet, um, but this is coming up on Movie Club, and so I'm not sure I made sure that I wanted to pick this up on physical, just in case it wasn't streaming anywhere. Um, but I'm a huge sci-fi nut. I love sci-fi. It's one of my favorite genres. And so I was extremely excited to check this out as soon as I was given the chance to. Next up is another movie we've got coming up on Movie Club fairly soon, and that's Some Like It Hot. This classic, iconic comedy from 1959 is just like it's legendary in so many different respects with Marilyn Monroe and uh, Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon. Um, it is such an iconic comedy. One of the best films to come out of the fifties from what I remember. Um, I have not actually watched this yet. As I said, this will be coming up on movie club. And so I did want to pick up a physical copy. And so like with everything else here, when I saw that it was available at my local store for 50% off, I picked it up and now it's on my shelf. Speaking of Tarkovsky, I also picked up Stalker, which is going to be coming up on Movie Club as well. So same reasoning there um, is that I wanted to have it on a physical version just in case it wasn't streaming anywhere. Um, but this film is just legendary in the cinephile circle. Um, so many people talk about this movie, this kind of post-apocalyptic metaphysical journey. I'm, I'm reading that from the back of the case because I have no other way to describe this movie from what I've seen. Um, it is unlike anything that I've ever seen seen or heard of. Uh, so I'm really excited to finally check this out. And when we cover it on Movie Club, uh, hopefully it lives up to the high expectations I've set for it. Almost there, two more. Uh, I guarantee I'm almost done. If you're sick of hearing me talk, I'm almost done. Uh, but next up, I actually wanted to go ahead and get one of my favorite films, again, similar to Seconds, that I've seen over the course of the last year for the first time, and that's Uncut Gems. Um, I love this movie, but I cannot watch it probably more than once in the span of a couple of months. Um, this movie is an anxiety attack on film. The entire film is just anxiety inducing. It is tense. It is just constantly moving, constantly talking. Um, and as someone who deals with anxiety like I do, it can be a little triggering sometimes and can give me elevated heart rates and stuff like that. But that is the sign of a film that is so well done. And if you've never seen it before, um, this is Adam Sandler's best performance. Hands down, he was robbed of an Oscar nomination for this film. And so if you've never seen it before, you absolutely should. It is a near perfect film. I can't really think of any flaws with it off the top of my head right now, but highly recommend it. You should check it out if you haven't before. And come on, you had to get the Criterion one because the inside is a Furby. Alrighty, the last one up here, and this one's a special one uh, for a couple of reasons, and that is the 1932 film by Carl Theodore Dreyer, Vampire. Um, this is a very similar film to Nosferatu and, of course, Dracula. It's a lot of the same kind of similar story, um, but this film is really special just because it truly feels distinct from those two, even though it is very similar. Um, this film is gothic mood and vibe incarnate. You know, while Dracula can be a bit spooky and fun to have on Halloween, and Nosferatu is now a classic, and we're currently awaiting an excellent looking remake by Robert Eggers, Vampire is something you can put on in the background just for ambiance during your Halloween parties, but also have it be a fantastic film. Um, again, it is not one of the best films I've ever seen, similar to Haxon. It does have some issues that I have with it, but this collector's set or whatever is fantastic. It does come with a book that has the entire script uh, and an essay written about it. And then, of course, I'm a sucker for these cardboard uh, slip cases. And so knew I had to pick this up. I really respect this movie, and uh, it looks great on the shelf, too. So had to pick it up. 
All righty, so that is it. Those are all the films that I picked up during the Criterion Collection sale at Barnes & Noble. But more importantly, I'd love to hear what movies you picked up over the course of this entire sale. I'm sure many of you out there have picked up your favorite movie or something you've been waiting to watch for quite a while. And so I'd love to hear down in the comments section what you picked up and if you're excited to check it out for the first time or as a rewatch. But thank you so much for joining me on this video. I know it's kind of different from what I usually do, but I'm trying out a couple of different video concepts to try and grow the channel a little bit. And so if you like this video, go ahead and leave it a like and subscribe. We have a lot of different things that are coming up. We do have our weekly live stream every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and our show Movie Club that comes out every Friday at 4 a.m. just in time for your kind of morning commute journey or whatever you call it. But again, thank you so much for joining me on this special video. And uh, until next time, make sure to keep those eyes on the screen.